Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, CCX here. Welcome back to the Legends of the Majora's Mask. In the last episode, we ended up completing the Great Bay... Well, I was about to literally say we ended up completing the Great Bay Temple. We did not complete the Great Bay Temple. If we did, that would be very, very fast, and I'd be playing this game at a very incredible maximum speed. But in all honesty, we're not playing this at a maximum speed because that would be ridiculous. Anyways, in the last episode, we ended up doing a few side quests here and there. We did a Garon race, so that was interesting. We ended up completing the Powder Keg minigame. Well, not minigame. We did the Powder Keg job and also got qualified to people to actually use Powder Kegs. And it's weird how, you know, Powder Kegs used to be something they used to drink beer in or any type of drink. And we can use it as explosives and, and it's, it's incredible like explosive alcohol ladies and gentlemen now i'm wearing the bunny hood and you guys are probably saying gee i remember this mask or quote unquote mask even though it's called it's called the bunny hood i highly doubt it's called the bunny hood mask is it really called the bunny hood mask if it is that's yeah it's just called bunny hood yeah it's the only it's actually probably i think the only item that's not a mask that's very weird Anyways, before we head to anywhere and start our wonderful days, what we want to do is we want to exit out here. Now, in the last episode, we did showcase what happens when you go to Romani's ranch at the end of the at the end of the final day. Yes, something is amiss, and we need to solve that problem immediately. But the thing is, we can't really solve that problem because we are kind of lacking a lot of ways of getting there. And since we blew up a big giant boulder, what else is good enough to using a powder cake to be able to explode that rock? You can actually go there for the first and second day and try to use small bombs, but I'm just going to say this now. They don't do diddly. All right. Like they do jack all. And if you think they did do something, then you are you're sadly mistaken. Anyways, we came in this area before and I completely ignored it because that's just me. I wanted to come here as a Goron because the Goron, ironically enough, is kind of like this game's version of the Goron Tunic. As you can see here, I can still actually take a lot of damage from these guys, but eh, what are you going to do? But my fist end up taking these guys down in like three hits. Also, they end up sporting a lot of rubies just for killing them. So yeah, if you kind of looking for the ability of grinding for rubies, well, here you go. It's not the recommended ideal place, mind you, because of the fact that they only give you 50 rubies, and 50 rubies is kind of like, eh. It's like chump change to people. And because it's a little bit easier to fight them as the Goron, since they only take, like I said, three hits. But it is time to get the hot piece that I end up forgetting, because I was about to get myself killed. And we got ourselves another heart piece. Oh, yeah. Another heart piece for me and uh, another heart piece for you. Anyways, let's go ahead and actually continue. The first thing we want to do first is we want to go back to the bomb shop. And we also want to get, we kind of want to also go to the item shop as well. Now, uh, uh, run with me here. This will make sense in due time. But the main reason why we want to go, we want to get... Two, we want to go visit those two shops. One, if we visit the bomb shop, we'll be able to buy ourselves a powder keg for 50 rubies. If you go back to the guy, he'll actually tell you to do the, I think he'll actually tell you to do the powder keg side quest again, even though you don't really want to do the powder keg side quest again, because that'd be really, really dumb. So what you want to do is talk to this guy here, and he'll say something about blah, 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 blah. He says that, oh, you can use powder kegs and buy it for 50 rubies. You always want to come to this guy, and it's very, very important. Powder kegs made by my instructor are extremely powerful. Come back to see me if you run out, and we will, dear sir. What about bomb shoes? What about bomb shoes? All right, I don't want to hear anything about bomb shoes. I don't want to hear anything about those stupid, dumb bomb shoes. Bastards. Anyways, the main attraction here is this guy. Oh, baby, that's a nice thing you got there. Let me hear a song you wrote on that. Well, let's see. Yeah, I don't feel like being, like, annoying with this, so I'm just going to create something that's just very easy to remember. Because the thing about this is that you, when you end up learning the Scarecrow song, they don't really show you it to you in the menu, which I kind of wish that they did, but whatever. I mean, seriously, whatever. Okay, now that we got the Scarecrow song, 
what we want to do next is we want to we actually want to head uh we want to head to um, milk road at least i think it's called milk road it's called milk road i think yeah it's called milk road all right good we want to head to milk road because we want to go ahead and actually get that side quest started now after we do this we are gonna kind of leave and not come back until the first day but until then we might as well just get it started now and not later now before we came here we found like very very three two depressing cat well three if you really want to count the guy that we just saved for his wonderful cuckoos mm, he loved his chicken so much and he knows that he's gonna die and <laughs> he couldn't see the chickens guys you gotta just see the chickens oh so terrible anyways welcome to romani ranch we have came here before also this sign is changed in the 3ds version this sign is actually uh ripped right out of kakariko village in ocarina time yeah laziness <laughs> But no, we came here before and we couldn't really absolutely do anything. But if we come here the first day, well, you can see that girl is running around. No, she's not running around with the speed of sound. We're not making Sonic references. I already made a Sonic reference in the last episode. We ain't making it again. And yes, to tattle, that is indeed my horse. Now, people have wondered how in the world did Epona manage to get over here? Hi, Epona. Can I ask something? Are you a magic horse? And if you're a magic horse, you can be able to clip through the gate yourself and I don't have to help you. But you want to know something? I know your secrets, Epona. You have ghostly invisible powers, which they're probably going to change in Breath of the Wild. Anyways, let's go ahead and talk to the girl who's going to go and give us a very stupid nickname that a girl that I like ends up giving me a very dumb nickname as well. She called me those bird things from Twilight Princess, guys. I'm offended. Anyways. I'm Romani. I was given the same name as the ranch. Oh, soccer. What's your name? You know what? I'm not going to say my name. Screw you. Hmm. Well, all right then. How about Grasshopper? Seriously, you give me the Grasshopper name anyways. <sighs> Whatever. See, you're wearing green clothes. And you're patter about and you're patter about when you walk, so Grasshopper it is. What is that supposed to mean? Romani was practicing for tonight. Uh, you consider yourself in third person? Oh, actually, no, first person. What am I talking about? They are coming. Dun, dun, dun. Now it's time for me to get in my extraterrestrial. They, they come at night every year when the carnival approaches. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We got mother effing aliens up in this piece. I know, it doesn't really make any sense. Why do we have aliens in this other game? Shh, Majora's Mask. They come riding in a bright, shiny ball. A whole lot of them come down. And that cow in the Japanese version had a nose ring. Why? Why is that relevant? I have no idea. It doesn't really make any sense. Basically, we have aliens. Now, people have speculated by saying that they're ghosts. But I'm just going to say this now. Guys, the stereotypical, they come from space. They float around. They look like aliens, they steal cows, they're aliens. I don't know where people get ghosts from. Like, seriously, they look nothing. I mean, I guess it makes some sort of sense that they look like a variant of ghosts. But they're not ghosts. They're friggin' aliens, guys. Hell, they even got the techno, the techno type music. What ghost has music that's not techno based? I mean... Unless you're watching a particular anime that has that, then uh, I guess that's cool. But my point still stands. These things are bloody... Uh, they're, they're, they're aliens. They're not ghosts. I don't know where you guys get ghosts from. Anyways, I know... Okay, she wants us to go ahead and shoot ten ghosts. She basically wants us to play a mini game, And our goal is to shoot ten ghosts. And here's the thing. This side quest, they want you to use Epona... I'm gonna say this now, don't use Epona. Like, don't, just don't. Now, when you see the locations of these um, ghost balloons, they're actually, this is actually where all the ghosts are gonna show up. I mean, <sighs> it's where all the aliens are gonna show up, guys. I don't care what anybody says, unless you guys have actual proof that they're, that them are called, yeah, by the way, their names are just called them. Yeah, I don't. I don't understand that. I mean, jeez. They're like, they're just literally just called them. Just them, guys. Just them. Um, but they need better nicknames. 
instead of them, I'm gonna call them, um, hmm. I'm gonna call them, no, that uh, gasoline just sounds dumb. <laughs> uh, now the one behind the barn over here, this is actually, okay, no, that's not the one. Um, there's actually, oh no, the map actually shows you the two dots enemies of what the, oh yes, and the map really helps you a lot. Like, if you really are trying to figure out where they all are, just look at the map, because the map actually indicates where they all are located. Yeah, the map is really, really useful, and it would take this in Twilight Princess, and by adding, like, little dots here and there to actually explain where particular things are located. And it really, really helps, because that's something that's really, really good. I'll teach Romani's horse calling song to you. Now, you two keep getting along and go practice. We already got along. She's my horse. I mean, seriously, why was she not? Uh, eh. Here's, I'm also, also hoping that Breath of the Wild brings back Epona's song, since we have Epona in that game, so it kind of would make sense that Epona's song be in the game. Because Epona never comes to you unless you play Epona's song. It's literally called Epona's song. Like, why is it, why is it not called, um, um, Malin? That's her name. I know it's Malin, right? No, I'm thinking, okay, yeah, because I'm thinking of Marin from um, Link's Awakening. Anyways, we have bonded with the horse. When your arrow hits these, they burst into nothing, but the real ones will keep popping up. If they get to the barn, we lose. They run away at the first light of the sun, so we'll have to keep fending them off. <sighs> Alright, you know how she says, we? She ain't gonna help you. First off, she ain't got no arrows. Second off, she's hitting diddly. Third off, we're Link. We end up saving everybody. Also, that dog is going to be very, very important as well. It's funny because it's red. It counts as an enemy now, but it's actually going to be very, very important later on. All right. Now that we have this wonderful, our wonderful horse, I'm going to go and make a pit stop. We're going to head to Southern Swamp. How much time are we in? We're 12 minutes? Eh, that's not too bad. Yes, guys. You guys need to know how much time we are in recording because you guys are part of me. You guys are part of my LP. I love you guys. You guys are the subscribers and my Mavericks hunters. I was about to say you guys are just my Mavericks. Except I realized that if I say you guys are my Mavericks, that means that you guys are evil and you guys are going to betray me. Give it time. You guys will probably betray me like soon enough. <laughs> and it's like, eh. Play Mega Man X. And you guys will get the joke of my name. That's not really a joke. You guys will get the indication of my name. And since this swamp is very, very low tide, we really don't have much to worry about. So the Goron actually won't drown here. Thank goodness. That'd be really, really sad and really, really hilarious. Also, the... Yes, and you guys are probably wondering what I'm about to do. I am... Okay, I'm not going to be a jerk. That's, that's kind of mean. I was going to go ahead and try to get the... I was going to get the free... <laughs> the free potion. But even if that's even... That's even ruder for me, to be honest. Anyways, let's go ahead and talk to Kotaki. Yeah, Kotaki. And let's go ahead and buy ourselves a red potion. All right. Now, this red potion is going to be very, very important. It's also important because it ends up giving us a very wonderful item, I might add. Because this wonderful item literally will help us out in the long run when we end up going into a particular fortress in the Great Bay. Call it a hunch. I know what I'm doing. I am indeed a professional. Mmm, I love this game so much. Also, I finally 100%ed um, Twilight Princess. I have to thank my friend who is a massive nerd when it comes to that game. Like, she, she, like, she, like, really, she really, really loves that game to death to a point where I asked where a particular thing is and she knew it lickety split. And it's like, wow, wow. That's incredible. And, you know, I'm all for it. I love it when people know the vi their favorite video games ins and outs. Because not only do you learn new things, sometimes when you yourself end up, like, playing the game, they end up learning, the people who are, like, you know, it's their favorite game, ends up learning things for themselves, too. And that's something what I like about um, Majora's Mask. And any well, actually, no. I just say that's what I like about my favorite video games in general. Is that when people end up um, finding out new tricks and it's like, wait a minute, you can do that? 
when in the world can you do that? Like, the gasp! Hello, bomb chews, you stupid little bastards. Yeah, those things are bomb chews, and they're not really that fun. Anyways, the reason why we're here is to look at that rock placement that's right over there. I, okay, I got in there, they're still going rapid. Now, the main reason why we want to be here is we kind of need the lens of truth and we also need the red potion. Hello? Huh? Don't tell me that. I'm shocked you're the first person who's ever spoken to me. I've been here for many years, waving my arms around and asking for help, but everyone ignores me and passes by. Well, here's the thing. The reason why everybody ends up ignoring you is because there's gates here, so how in the world are they supposed to get to you? You're used to it, though. Oh, don't worry, pal. I know how you feel about being a ghost. Can you give me some medicine? Sure thing. Now, the thing is, is that you probably wouldn't know what to really give him, but it's really the red potion. I mean, if you gave Koemi the red potion, you also have to give him the red potion, too. By the way, second-handed um, taste buds in these red potions. We're actually also drinking these as well, so we're kind of tasting what these guys are tasting. And we got ourselves the stone mask, and we become a plain stone. Now, let me practice standing out. Victory! 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 Ah, he's, um, he's happy. Now, the stone mask, you guys are probably wondering, what in the world does the stone mask do? No, it does not actually turn into a stone. It, that thing just came out of the ground. Don't like I didn't see that. But anyways, the stone mask allows you to look like a derp. And when you go ahead and walk around, enemies, certain enemies cannot see you. This is very important in a particular side quest. And let's just say, I love the stone mask face. Look at it. Duh! I'm Lincoln. I'm a stone. But if you get rid of the mask, they can see you. Ha! <laughs> they end up hitting each other. That's funny. All right, guys. I'm actually going to end the part here. Well, I'm not going to end it here. It's kind of very awkward. Let's kind of leave. <laughs> In the next episode, we're going to be heading back to... <sighs> you know what? I think that our next main attraction will be over here. So, in the next episode, Epona is going to go ahead and annoy the crap out of me because her jumping sucks in this game. Seriously, no matter what game Epona is in, her jumping still sucks. Uh, anyways, in the next episode, we'll be heading into this direction. I've been CCX, and I'll be see you guys next time. CCX, over and out of here. See us.